Hello humans, Batsy here with a new episode of the early game farms, this time we are going to be producing andesite alloys. In case you didn't watch the first episode, early game farms is a series of create schematics and guides that are focused on the early game. But how much early game will depend on the products we going to be producing. For example, wood is needed very early on, so a tree farm should be as accessible and cheap to build as possible. While precision mechanisms are harder to produce and will start to be more relevant after we already producing brass and other more complex items. It's important to keep that in mind because the rates, scale, and materials used will entirely depend on what I deem appropriate. You might have entirely different needs or priorities than me. But that's enough of chit-chatting, let's get into the farm already. Today we going to be producing some andesite alloys. You can see all the materials that we going to use on screen, and just like last week, I made sure that we don't have to go to the nether. It does require a few steps to produce andesite alloys. But, we primarily want to look at a source of flint and gravel to produce the andesite blocks, and a source of iron nuggets to mix them up with the blocks to produce the alloys. Just like last time, it starts with some water and lava to produce the cobblestone, and a line of drills to mine it out. We going to use 4 drills, but this time we will be running them at 64 RPM. Once the cobblestone gets mined, it will go down into the mill to get converted into gravel. And we will be running those millstones at 128 RPM. Once the gravel is produced, it will drop into this water canal where an encased fan will very slowly push it towards the funnel. We want it to be this slow on purpose to make sure the gravel takes long to rise to the surface. That way it will get washed up before that happens, and we avoid having to use a brass funnel. Once it gets washed, the flint and nuggets will eventually climb on top of the funnel and continue forward. To separate them we going to make use of two toolboxes. The first one of them with all their slots set to flint, and the second one with only nuggets. Before we can use the flint, we need to produce more cobblestone in order to have more gravel. That's why we going to have a very slow drill that will be generating cobble on the side just to produce the andesite. You might wonder, why not use the gravel we are already generating? Well, because we don't have brass funnels, and the logistics of it would be larger than a new cobble generator. Under the new cobble generator, we going to use another mill to convert it into gravel, which will run slightly faster than the drill, but still very slow. And at the back of all of this, we going to use several cauldrons with dripstone to generate the lava required to make andesite. I'm fairly sure that even removing one of these rows would still be enough, but I rather have excess lava, especially when it just costs a little bit of iron to set up. All of that lava will slowly get pumped into the basin from below. And with all of those materials combined, we going to start producing the andesite blocks. The only thing left to do is combine those blocks with the iron that we are generating on the first section of the farm, and that will already give us the andesite alloys. Now, a couple of clarifications, the reason we are running the drills at those speeds is to make sure that we never have an overflow of cobblestone or gravel. Leaving the only overflow of the farm, which is the flint and iron, to be on a controlled section that we don't need to pay attention to often. And between having an excess of cobblestone, or having an excess of iron, I would rather have an excess of iron. Sure we could squeeze a little bit more out of this farm if we speed things up a little bit, but I much rather have something reliable where I can afk without worrying about it. As for the rates of the farm. To make sure that the lava was stable, I had it running for an entire hour, and after that, I had it running for yet another hour to see how much it made on the second one. The second hour made 509 alloys, which is pretty respectable. I had this running for pretty much an entire day, and it seems reliable between 505 and 511 alloys per hour. Now, let me show you how to import this schematic into your worlds, and I will also explain how to squeeze a little bit better rates if you don't mind going to the nether for it. Like with any schematic, we start by placing it down in our world. If you are playing in survival, you will have to use the cannon for this part. Once the cannon is done building it, we going to fix all the things that went wrong, which for schematics can be plenty of them. Starting with the boilers, tanks generally are always bugged so make sure to replace them until you see the boiler status. Something that can also happen is that the shafts are missing. If your engine looks like this, then simply make sure to add the shafts for each one of the engines, 
and do make sure they are all in line with the chain drive. After fixing those bugs, we can go ahead and start filling up this top part with lava. We only need lava on the square, the little pointy block will fill itself to generate the cobble. The last thing we want to do now is the water, which there are a few spots for it. First, the stairs by the drill so we can generate the cobble. And also this small stair by the mechanical press too. Next, we want to fill up the canal, all the way until the last one. It's important that all of them have water, otherwise the gravel will reach the funnel. The last spot is by the steam engine, and I would personally leave this one for last so the farm doesn't start running before everything is ready. We simply want to fill up this 3x3, three three, making sure that the cogwheels and pumps are waterlogged, and that the gap underneath is flowing water, otherwise the water wheels won't spin. That should take care of everything, but like always with schematics, you never know what kind of funny bugs you might find. You are welcome to join my discord and ask for help if you need it. The last thing I'm going to show is how to squeeze a bit more performance out of this. We can see how the toolboxes are getting filled with flint and nuggets, that's because that part of the farm produces slightly more on purpose. That can't be fixed without using a speed controller which requires a precision mechanism, but we can tweak it a bit with something cheaper. We can use an adjustable chain gear shift, which requires an electron tube, and that requires one quartz to craft so you will need to go to the nether. What we can do then is first, slow down the rotation of the encased fan, otherwise it will overshoot with the gravel. Look carefully at how I did it, from small to big, and then another small to big. Now that the fan is running slower, we can remove this belt in here, place the adjustable chain at the top, and a normal chain at the bottom, and we connect it with this small cogwheel with a gearbox. Now the drill is running twice as fast as before, but that will make it run out of nuggets and flint eventually. To prevent that, we're going to use a lever on the chain, and simply power it to slow down the drill. If we ponder the adjustable chain, we can see how powering the chain will double the speed of the rest, if the chain is the origin of the rotation. Or it will slow down only the adjustable part, if it's not the origin of the rotation. So with that in mind, we can power it to run at a lower speed, and whenever the toolboxes start to get filled up, we can unpower it to let it run faster. It's not the most ideal thing, and I don't guarantee that other issues might occur from running it faster, but if you are willing to control it every now and then and keep track of how it's running, this is a simple way to get better rates. I hope this guide has been useful, and that you all will enjoy this farm in your own worlds. As always, the schematic will be in the description below, and feel free to join my discord if you need help with it. Thank you so much if you made it this farm into the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and maybe even leave a comment, it would greatly support the channel. Take care everyone. Bye.